going to be looking at vertical stretches and horizontal stretches. So let's look at this graph here. We have f of x, the original graph, x minus 3 squared. And we want to create a new graph in red by multiplying all the y coordinates by 2. So I've labeled some points on my original parabola, and I just want to multiply all my y values by 2. So this point 0 and 9, I'm going to multiply 9 by 2 to be 0 and 18. Um, 1 and 4, I'll multiply 4 by 2 to become 1 and 8. 2 and 1, I'll multiply y by 2 to get 2 and 2. 4 and 1, I'll multiply the 1 by 2 to get 4 and 2. 5 and 4, I multiply the 4 by 2 to get 8. So literally my mapping notation is x is staying the same in all of those points and y is being multiplied by 2. So what I've really done here is I have done a vertical stretch about the y, the x-axis, sorry, by a factor of 2. Now just a little tip on terminology, remember how we reflected in an axis? When we stretch, points are stretched about an axis. So we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. Do we have any invariant points? Are there any points that I stretched and they did not move, they stayed the same? Well, hopefully you can see that there is an invariant point and it is the point 3, 0 because when I stretch 0, it stays at 0. So in fact, any x-intercept for a vertical stretch will be an invariant point. If I wanted to write my equation, it's going to be g of x is equal to multiply my y values, which is really what my function is, by 2. So it would become 2 f of x. If I wanted to check that on the calculator, here it is, x minus 3 squared, and I do 2 times f of x, which is really my y1, and you can see that all of my points from my original to that are multiplied by 2. So I know that that equation actually works. Okay, in this one here, we want to transform the function to g of x equals 2 f of x. So we just saw in the last one, if I multiply my function by a number, that is doing a vertical stretch. So this would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. So my mapping notation is my points x, y are going to become the points x, 2, y. So x is going to stay the same in all of them. I just multiply y by 2. So multiplying 0 by 2, 4 by 2, 0 by 2, negative 7 by 2, negative 10 by 2, and 0 by 2. Okay, I can see that there are a bunch of invariant points there that stayed the same. In fact, any point on the x-axis is going to stay the same because you can't stretch 0. But let's look at the other points. So negative 2, 4 becomes the point negative 2, 8. 1 and negative 10 becomes the point 1 and negative 20. This point becomes 0 and negative 14. And I can see that that is what my graph is going to look like. So I can kind of connect my dots like this. Just a very rough sketch here. And up like that. So there it is, vertically stretched by a factor of 2. So let's talk about the domain and the range. So I'm not dividing by 0. I'm not square rooting a negative. I'm not logging a negative. So I know that my domain is just x is an element of the reals or in interval notation from negative to positive infinity. My range, since those extend forever in both directions, in opposite directions, the ends of the graph, y is an element of the reals, or going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, in this example, we're going to look at one half f of x. So that number in front is still my vertical stretch, so I know it's going to be a vertical stretch, this time by a factor of a half. So I should expect things to get kind of smaller. So my mapping notation is going to be x and a half y. So I'm going to take half of all of my y values, half of 0, half of 4, half of 0, half of negative 7, half of negative 10, and half of 0. So again, even though I'm stretching it by a different number, I still have those invariant points on the x-axis because you cannot stretch zero. Zero times a half is still zero. So according to my table here, um, this point 1, negative 10 becomes the point 1, negative 5. 
0 and negative 7 becomes the point 0, negative 3.5. And then negative 2 and 4 becomes the point negative 2 and 2. So I can kind of connect the dots here to see what my graph looks like. Again, just a really rough sketch. And it kind of looks like that. Have my domain and range changed? Well, I'm still not dividing by zero. I'm still not square rooting a negative or logging a negative. So I know that my domain has stayed the same. And my arms still extend infinitely in opposite directions. So my range has also not changed. Okay, so again, let's talk about domain just to summarize it there. Do domain and proper set notation is set as this. And what this is right here, x with the line and x, it looks like an e and an r. What that really means is the set of all x such that x is an element of the reals or in interval notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. That will always be your domain for a function. And I'm talking functions, not word problems. That will always be your domain for a function unless you are dividing by zero with rationals, square rooting a negative with radicals, or logging a negative, which is in logs, but we're gonna see that later. For range, I always want you to look at the graph. And then just a note about describing functions. Remember that we reflect in an axis and we stretch about an axis. So I remember that just by remembering RISA, reflect in, stretch about. So that kind of helps me with my terminology to make sure I'm describing my transformations correctly. So let's look at this one here. This time we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it horizontally instead of vertically. So I have this radical function, the square root of x minus two, and I want to create a new graph by multiplying all the x coordinates by a half. So since I'm multiplying all the x coordinates by a half, my points will line up horizontally. So I multiply one and negative one, I multiply one by a half. Four and zero, I multiply four by, by a half. Neg nine and one, I multiply the nine by a half and I get 4.5. So if I connect my dots like that, it looks like I have a function that is half the distance from the y-axis than it was originally. It is a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. Now mapping notation is literally what is happening point to point. So we took all of our x values and we multiplied them by a half and my y values stayed the same. Were there any points that stayed the same and were not actually stretched? In other words, was there an x value that when I multiplied it by half, it did not change? And that was in fact the y-intercept because on the y-intercept, you have an x value of zero and zero times a half or any number for that matter will always stay as zero. Okay, I'm gonna save the equation for later. I wanna do this again, but this time I'm gonna multiply it by two. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, just multiplying it by two. So again, my points line up horizontally. So I'm gonna take the x value of one and multiply it by two, an x value of four and multiply it by two, an x value of nine and multiply it by two is 18, okay? So this in fact is a horizontal stretch by a factor of two about the x-axis. So I took all my x points, multiplied them by two. So if I kind of connect my dots, it looks like that. Again, I do have an invariant point. That invariant point is at zero and negative two because when I take zero, the x value, multiply it by two, it stays as zero. Okay, so I've done one by a half and one by three. Let's put it together. Here are my three equations, one on top of the other, the graphs, okay? The black one, I did a horizontal stretch by a half. I wanna know, is b equal to a half or is it two? My original function, well, that would just be b equal to one. And then my red graph was a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. So is b equal to a half or is b equal to two? So I wanna know what my b value is related to my horizontal stretch. So remember we said when it comes to horizontal, horizontal lies, it lies like Pinocchio. So here's my three graphs here. I want to check by putting them into the calculator. This is what I did into the calculator. So. The blue graph is my original. Look at the black graph. That black graph was stretched by a factor of a half. 
but you can see on the equation that my B value was 2. Now that red graph was horizontally stretched by a factor of 2. Look at how I put it into my calculator. I put it in as a half. So notice what I have right now. I have a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half, a B value of 2. They are reciprocals of one another. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, my B value is a half. They are reciprocals of one another because horizontal lies. So let's use this fact now to sketch some graphs, okay? So I want to sketch g of x equals f of 2x. So here's my graph of f of x, this nice little w, okay? And I want to describe the transformation. So if I have f of 2x, well, that's a b value of 2. What that really means is it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. Because remember, a half and your b value, they are reciprocals of one another. So b is 2, that means it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. So that literally means I'm taking all my x values and I'm cutting them in half. So I'm doing half of x and y. Okay, so let's do that. So this x value of negative 2, half of that becomes an x value of negative 1. Is this going to work for me? This x value of negative 4 becomes an x value of negative 2. So here and here. This x value of 0 stays as an x value of 0. Ah, so I have an invariant point. My invariant point 0, 2 at the y-axis, the y-intercept. I have a y, sorry, an x value of 2, half of that is at 1. Here I have an x value of 4, half of that is at 2. So I can connect my dots, and this will be my new function. This is the function y equals to f of 2x. Okay, let's try another one. This time we're going to do f of a half x. Okay, so in this case here, the b value is a half. So horizontal lies, so describe the transformation. It is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 about the y-axis, again, because your b and your horizontal stretch factor are reciprocals of one another. So I'm going to make all my points double the distance from the y-axis. So I'm doubling all of my x's. My y values, of course, stay the same. So when I double negative 4, I double it, it becomes negative 8. When I double negative 2, it becomes negative 4. When I double the x value of 0, it stays as 0. Ah, I have an invariant point. When I double 4, sorry, 2, it becomes 4. And when I double 4, it becomes 8. So I can connect those dots, and I see that this is what my graph looks like, and this is the graph of y equals to f of 1 half x. Okay, so let's look at another one here. So in this graph here, I'm going to tell you that there's been a stretch, and we want to write the equation, okay? So I'm doing a horizontal stretch. And so what that means is that I'm stretching it about the y-axis. So when I do a horizontal stretch, the points line up horizontally. So let's look at for some points that line up horizontally. So the blue graph is the original. So I see that this point here is 6 units away. So this point here is 6 units away. And this point here is only 2 units away. So you can see the points went from 6 to 2 units away from the y-axis. So that means there is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third. They are 1 third closer to the x-axis than they, or sorry, to the y-axis than they were before. Okay? So my tip to you is you always do the reciprocal because horizontal lies. If I have a horizontal stretch by a factor of a third, that means my b value is equal to 3. So in terms of my equation, it is f of 3x.
Let's look at this question here. So now we're looking at a vertical stretch. So I'm looking vertically. My tip is that vertical stretch means the points line up vertically. So if we look at here, this point over here on the transformed graph is 12 units away. But you can see on the original graph, it is only four units away. So since my points went from four to 12, there is a vertical stretch from 4 to 12 that is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Now with vertical, remember vertical is always straight up on us, so that means my a value is 3. So g of x is equal to 3f of x. Horizontal lies again and vertical is straight up. So to summarize this lesson here, y equals a f of b of x. I want to mention, first of all, negatives. In the first part of 1.2, if A was negative, there was a reflection. If B was negative, there was a reflection. I want you to remember that the stretch is not negative. The negative means a reflection. So I don't want you to say to me it has a vertical stretch by a factor of negative 3. The stretch is 3. The negative would tell me it's a vertical reflection. So be careful on that. So your A value is your vertical stretch, and that is all your y values are multiplied by a so x stays the same y changes now b is your horizontal stretch but because horizontal lies your b value in your equation means that the stretch is the reciprocal 1 over b so that means all your x values are multiplied by 1 over b y stays the same and x changes now remember that stretches change the shape and size but not the orientation and again, please remember, stretches are not negative. So speaking of stretches, the function went to the gym. And his trainer said, before the workout, I want you to give me an A equals 2 and a B equals 0.5.